Good evening. Welcome to the Sun Deck. Woo! Let's hear it for uh, Midnight Lightning, for Mark and the whole band, for the live music. We're going to give them a chance to get some dinner right now. And we're going to start our award ceremony and our we got some thank yous to do, a few recognitions to make, and want to uh, present our winners and some Bounce Back Give Back Award winners. Before we get started, awesome. I'm the, uh, I'm the MC. My job is to inject a few corny jokes and keep this thing moving. I promise that I will. Like I said, first of all, I want to welcome everyone to the Sun Deck. As you know, we were hybrid and virtual the last two years. This year we're back in person and I said we're gonna blow the roof off the sun deck and it looks like we're off to a good start. The first year that we did this, I said I fought for an 11 o'clock uh, gondola shutdown. And at about 10 o'clock, I think River and I were the only ones standing here. So just a reminder that once the uh, awards are done, the party's not over, you can keep partying. My name is Chris Klug, I'm the chairman and founder of Chris Klug Foundation and a 22-year liver transplant recipient. Thank you. And I'm grateful to still be here. I made a commitment 22 plus years ago on a transplant waiting list for six years. I said, hey, if I get a second chance at life, we're gonna do everything we can to give back and help the 106,000 people waiting for a solid, solid organ transplant today across the country. That's what CKF is all about. So first of all, I wanna thank all of you for being up here, for being a part of this. 17 years, we wonder every year, is, it, uh, is anyone still gonna show up? And uh, I think the answer was a resounding yes this year. So thank you very much. I, will. I wanna start out with a couple of thank yous. Then I'm gonna pass the mic to our executive director, Jesse Rochelle, to say a few words. And then we've got uh, a few awards to give out. I wanna thank our, our sponsors first. First of all, I wanna say thank you to our hosts, Aspen Snowmass. Let's hear it for Chef Matt, for his whole team. How was it chilly this year? Save me a cup. I'm, uh, I'm coming for a cup in a minute here, Matt. I want to say thanks to, uh, of course, to Little Nell, to Chef Matt, to his whole team, to Paradise Bakery. How about the cookies? I saw Andrew Erdemann starting with a cookie back here somewhere. That's, uh, that's in the right spirit. Let's hear it for Aspen Valley Hospital, for Aspen Times, for the Duck Company, who generously donates our t-shirts every single year, thanks to Jim Bruno and Aaron Bruno and the Duck Company team, to Aspen Square for hosting us for registration and hosting our Bounce Back Give Back Award winners, to uh, Aspen Snowmass Sotheby's, to Catula, Alpine Bank, and Deep River Snacks. I want to say thanks to all of our partners and vendors, Six Productions, Social Light Photography, Midnight Lighting, Adam Brooks and Brooks Productions, uh, Matthew Snell, Michael Bond, who made the uh, ceramic awards for us, the cups that our top fundraisers and winners will take home, Mountain Creative, DJ Tenza, who's at the bottom, and uh, Kath and Jet with CJ Sports Timing. I get to uh, share a couple of pretty exciting numbers here with you right now. We had a total of 404 participants tonight broke the 400 uh, barrier, 294 racers, 101 riders. So give yourself a round of applause. We had four, four virtual participants, 20 teams, uh, an enormity of volunteers, as I said, vendors and partners and, and friends. It helped us raise, as of right now, $76,932. So congratulations to all of you, thank you. Thanks for believing in us, for uh, helping make this foundation possible. We're uh, approaching 20 years next year and still going strong. It's a local organization with a national impact, and that's a tribute and, and a thanks to all of you. One of my favorite parts of the evening before I pass the uh, microphone to Jesse is, I wanna, first of all, I wanna recognize all of our donor families. If we can have any of the donor families here with us, any, any organ donors, living organ donors themselves and donor families, if you can stand up, we want to give you a round of applause. I know we've got a few tonight. And if you don't want to, that's okay. We're giving you a round of applause anyway. Thank you. They're the heroes that make this all possible. How about some transplant recipients? I know we got a few here tonight. Steve Ass, Gavin Maitland, 
We've got a bunch of transplant recipients. We're going to recognize three of them tonight as our Bounce Back Give Back Award winners. And uh, got, a, got a few great stories to tell here. I want to pass the microphone right now to Jesse, our new executive director. She and uh, Anna Morgan Pilardi, our programming director, are doing an awesome job. We're lucky to have her. Jesse Rochelle. Thank you guys. It's a pleasure to be here. It's my exact two month anniversary with the foundation. And so it's really, really heartwarming and special to be here with all of you guys tonight. And I want to echo Chris's sentiments and thank all of our sponsors, vendors, volunteers, fundraising donors, our bounce back winners, um, participants, and definitely my partner in crime, Anna, who I believe is still outside right now, but this event would not be happening without her. Nice Chris. Oh, thank you. I got it special for tonight. Um, I am a longtime local and have lived in the Valley since 90 and previously worked for the Parks and Rec Department in Carbondale for 14 years. Um, but I came to the foundation when there was a job opening because um, transplant is really close to my family. My dad had a heart saving transplant seven years ago. And so I know firsthand the magic of it and I'm so appreciative each and every day for his donor and donor family and all donors and donor families out there. I did my first summer for life in 2014, and I'm really jealous of all of you guys tonight because it's the first one I've missed. Um, and even though it's hard, I have a serious FOMO. Um, I just want to quickly say some of the things that we've got coming up um, so that you guys know what is in store for 2023 and things that you should keep on your radar and maybe you know volunteer for, sign up for, look for us at. Um, in January, we're going to be at the um, at Gay Ski Week for the first time, talking about organ and tissue donation with um, all the people that come through for that event. We'll be back at the Winter X Games. In February, we will celebrate Donate Life Day on February 14th with blood drives around the country, including one in Aspen that you can sign up for. That will be at the hospital. We'll be back at the Donor Dash in Denver in July. In August, we will do our Leadville races again with our fundraising team, racing members for the mountain bike and the Trail 100. Wine and Dine will be back for its second year. If you missed it this year, you definitely want to check it out next year. The date is TBD, so keep an eye out. And then in November, we will join um, our charity partner runners at the New York City Marathon again. We've got one of them here. And you might have seen my face flash up there a couple times too, because I had the pleasure of doing it this year as well. Um, on top of all this, we'll have our webinar series, our donor news events, toolkit for teachers program, and we have a couple other things that we are um, having in the works, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, enjoy your dinner from the Little Nell, your cookies from Paradise Bakery. Please leave some for me. Uh, music by Midnight Lightning, and up next, we are going to do our Michael Wells Inspirational Award and our Bounce Back winners. Thank you, guys. Jesse's doing such an awesome job running CKF together with Anna, and very grateful to have her. And uh, obviously she has a, a personal connection to organ donation, it makes it uh, that much more special. All right, I got my son River here, he's gonna help me pass out the Michael Wells Inspirational Award. This is an award we pass out to annually here at Summit for Life to an individual or a family that's really helped inspire uh, our mission of uh, inspiring and, and touching those in the transplant community and and educating everyone about the importance of organ donation. And this is a really special award for us this year. It goes to uh, our friend Robbie Wade and to the Wade family. And Robbie Wade is an organ donor that, uh, that donated and helped save lives. Uh, Bob Wade has been on our, our foundation board from day one. Uh, the whole Wade family has been involved. They've done all of our Summit for Lives. Uh, they hiked again tonight. So help me please bring up the Wade family. To recognize Robbie Wade, the gift of life that he gave, and the Wade family for their volunteerism, for CKF, for organ donation, awareness. Bob and Ruth Wade, Ginny Myers, Miley and Carson Spong, our 2022 Michael Wells Inspirational Award recipients.
Thank you. Wow. What a night. We're so honored to be here receiving this award on behalf of Robbie. And so many of you knew him that are up here. And you all knew that he embodied love. He gave it freely, making sure that everyone felt special and welcome. From his best friends, to outsiders, to animals, and yes, even to his family, <laughs> Robbie made everyone feel like they were the only person that mattered in the room. So we weren't surprised when he expressed his wish to be an organ donor and extend that love. We just didn't realize it was a decision that would impact so many others over the past 20 years. When he crashed on his skateboard without a helmet, he was the model candidate for organ donation. A healthy 19-year-old body with so much life left. It was the perfect fit for donating organs and tissues. Painfully, yet beautifully, our family's deepest loss became so many families' gain. I recently had a conversation with a friend whose sister got a bacterial infection this spring that decimated her lung function, leaving her to spend five months in the ICU on machines that were oxygenating her blood outside of her body while she sat on the donor list um, for a new set of lungs, hoping for the possibility of a second chance at life. A couple weeks ago, she got that chance and is now using her donor lungs on her own. Yeah. Her story brought the 20 years without Robbie back to the forefront of my mind. I've now lived more of my life without him than I did with him. It's a painful milestone to hit, 20 years of missed birthdays and family gatherings and hugs. Robbie did give the best bear hugs. But hearing her story reminded me of all the holidays their families will now get to celebrate together. I know that through Robbie's story and the work of CKF, many others will get that same chance. I look at my family and know that this is enough to keep us moving forward and truly living. And tonight is a wonderful celebration of that. So thank you to Chris and to CKF for raising awareness about organ donation and everyone here who donated to our team, Robbie's crew, and to all, everyone up here tonight and everyone who donated. This work is providing families the opportunity to celebrate milestones they were not sure were possible. And just because Robbie isn't here doesn't, miss, doesn't mean we should miss an opportunity for a good party. So make sure you have a good time tonight. And he'd be turning 40 this year in July. So stay tuned about a smuggler rager in his honor. <laughs> and one more thing, we, um, we just printed a fresh batch of Get It On for Robbie stickers. So anybody who splurged for a new car in the last 20 years, um, we've got a bunch of them at the Ute, so come by and grab one. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for Robbie Wade, his legacy lives on, his gift lives on. I'm here today because of a hero like Robbie Wade. Thank you to the Wade family for accepting that, the Michael Wells 2022 Inspirational Award. Now we're going to move on to our Bounce Back Give Back Award recipients. And because we weren't in person the last two years, we have uh, three award recipients we get to bring up tonight in honor. We've got uh, Arizona. Philadelphia, and New York represented in the house. I'm going to do a brief introduction of each of our Bounce Back Give Back Award recipients, and they're going to come up, and they get to say a few words, and I'll, uh, I'll turn the mic over to them. Let me just say the Bounce Back Give Back Award recognizes a transplant recipient that has not only uh, had a second chance at life through, through organ transplantation, but they found a way to give back to make their, the transplant community better, to make their communities better. And I think these three really embody what the Bounce Back Give Back is all about. Let me first start with an introduction of Joelle Atkinson, our 2020 Bounce Back Give Back Award recipient. She's a kidney recipient before the age of two, and then a kidney and liver recipient before the age of 10. U.S. and World Transplant Games athlete, dancer and runner, masters in occupational therapy, Volunteers with the Pediatric Transplant Recipients. Please welcome 2020 Bounce Back Give Back Award recipient, Joelle Atkinson. Come on up, Joelle. All the way from Philadelphia. Thank you. 
I'll introduce the uh, other two recipients and then pass the mic to you. Our 2021 Bounce Back Give Back recipient is Zach Brooks. A broken toe and subsequent standard testing revealed need for a kidney transplant. Two-time recipient uh, from his mom and his dad where he received his kidneys. He's a US and world transplant athlete, dancer, author, actor, and podcast creator. Please help me welcome 2021 Bounce Back Give Back recipient, Zach Brooks. Any hype tonight? Thanks. How was the hike? It was good. Thank you. You survived. Yes, and, and by the way, great looking t-shirt. Yeah. Hey. Our 2022 Bounce Back Give Back recipient is Jen Lentini. She cardiomyopathy diagnosis and heart transplant at age 13, certified yoga instructor and award-winning baton twirler. Jen, I want to see that later. Maybe on the dance floor with uh, Midnight Lightning and behind you, supporting you. U.S. transplant athlete and adventure seeker. Listen to this, cage diving with sharks. I want to hear more about that, Jen. Bungee jumping, et cetera. We want to hear what the et cetera is as well. I can only imagine. Uh, a bachelor in uh, social work. Avid volunteer with organ donation organizations. Our 2022 Bounce Back Give Back recipient, Jen Lentini. All the way from Long Island. We're going to start with Joelle Atkinson. I get to pass the microphone to you, our 2020 recipient, to say a few words. And then you can pass it to you, Zach. Perfect. So I just wanted to thank the Chris Kluge Foundation so much for having me. This is honestly the coolest thing I've ever won. Um, <laughs> it's really awesome. I really wanted to go up the mountain tonight, but I just had a baby four months ago. So, um, <laughs> so I wasn't exactly ready. Um, but I had my first transplant before I was even um, before I was even a year old, or I guess after. I had my kidneys taken out when I was nine months old, um, and my first kidney from my dad when I was 18 months. So I was in and out of the hospital a lot, um, and I just I I was always sick. And I had my second kidney and liver transplant when I was nine. But the biggest thing is that my parents never told me what I couldn't do. They always focused on what I could do. So whether it was dancing, whether it was competing, whether it was school, anything, they always pushed me to do what I could do and not what I couldn't do. And I started speaking through Gift of Life Donor Program, which is the organ procurement organization in Philadelphia. I did my first speech when I was eight. Um, and then after that, I had my kidney and liver transplant from an amazing donor um, who was also my age from a county across, across the state. Um, and since then, I've kind of really taken off. I've graduated high school, I've graduated college, um, and then I went back and I got my master's in occupational therapy. Um, and when I went to school in 2014, my best friend Kyle also passed away, um, and he was a heart transplant recipient. And one of the things that he always told me was to go out and live my life because I can. Um, his, his philosophy was transplantation doesn't just prolong life, it gives life. And so that's what I did. I started running half marathons. I really focused on taking care of myself. Um, I did a lot more speeches. I did a lot more volunteering, and I gave back a lot more. Through running, I met my husband, Adam. Um, and we've been, we've been married since 2019. And this past year, um, I had a baby, which I never thought I'd ever be able to do. Um, I never thought I'd ever be able to have my own kid. Um, his name is Wesley. He's four months old. He's absolutely perfect. I miss him so much. Um, but again, thank you so much for this award and for having me. And it's just, it's an honor to be here. So thank you. Um, thank you, Chris, uh, for being here. Thank you, everyone in the room, for being here. Uh, Zach Brooks, two-time kidney transplant recipient. And kind of like uh, I told Chris last year when we did a video call together, this is one of the coolest of awards I ever could have gotten. Um, my mom and my dad are my donors, so obviously a huge thanks to them. And this is all a giant awareness event, so hopefully if you're new to this kind of world, you have that awareness and you have, um, take some zest and responsibility with that awareness to share it with other people because all of us are huge beneficiaries of the gift of life. And um, if we're recipients, we have a certain uh, demand that we give ourselves to live much better. So I've had two transplants. After my second transplant, just a few highlights of things I've done. I received a PhD. I wrote a number one uh, best-selling book. 
I'm a founder of a startup company, and so forth. So it's because of that second um, transplant and the other transplants as well that I've done these things. So if you're thinking about donating or thinking about being a part of this role in some way, you can really deeply impact the quality of life for another human around you, which is really nothing better in life to do. And this is what Chris and Anna and all the really wonderful people on Chris's team are doing. So it's an honor to be here, Chris, and thank you for, uh, thank you for being here tonight. this prestigious award as all the other recipients that won this because it really is one of the coolest awards as they said there's not another word I think to use but for that but my transplant journey started when I was 13 I have a younger brother who's six and a half years younger than myself and he was born with a hole in his heart so we always watched over him I was the healthy older sister I played every sport not every sport well but I did all the normal teenage things my biggest concern in life was 13 was boys what I was gonna to wear to school. I wasn't really very scholarly, so probably not my grades. But that was what I was concerned with. And then all of a sudden, I started having severe stomach pains at 13. And at that point, about a month after my birthday, I just had turned 13, they realized that I had cardiomyopathy and back and forth going to different emergency rooms. And there was one time that I had gone back to a different emergency room and they told my parents, worst case scenario was my ovaries were twisted, which is hard to hear as a woman. Now they couldn't have children when I grew up, but they wanted me to be okay. But they actually went in to do exploratory surgery on my abdominal region and they ended up going to cardiac arrest on the table. They sent my parents home after that because I have come from the smallest Italian Irish family I'll ever meet and they went to go be with my younger brother and they called him back two hours later and said, you have to come to the hospital to say goodbye now. At this point, my parents gave my last rites, everybody said goodbye, and I was hospitalized though, thank God, from a hospital in Long Island to New York where they had told me and my family I needed a heart transplant. I said, okay, sign me up, not realizing what it was. But I waited there for three months and a day, and on July 6, 1996, this is my donor in the picture, Matthew, who I carry with me because everything I do is because of him. I received my heart transplant, and at 13, it's hard, you're going through emotions as it is, you're going through your normal teenage life, and they stick you on prednisone, which isn't fun, but they told my parents that I might not make it back then to my 18th birthday to my 25th birthday, to my 30th birthday. And I'm proud to say, knock on wood, next year I'll turn 40. So when people ask me, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be 40. And to me, it really is about living your life every day as if it were your birthday. My best friend came with me, you could ask her, because I really do think it's my birthday every day, as I think we all should be. And one thing I do like to ask people, and I won't make you raise your hand, but if you were willing to take an organ transplant, which I'm sure many people are, please also think about becoming a donor, because if you're willing to receive, you should be willing to donate as well. So thank you all, and I hope to see you on the dance floor. If you find a baton, I will start. So thank you again so much. For Joelle Atkinson, Zach Brooks, and Jen Lentini. Our 2020, 21, and 22 bounce back Give back award recipients. These guys are champions in the Transmite community and in their communities. Thank you for all you guys do to help others that are going through the same thing we all did. All right, we got a couple of fun awards I want to present now. The furthest traveling team, and uh, I'm not exactly sure how this was compiled. I want to know where they came from, but it looks like 4,222 miles. I'm going to need an explanation from this later from the Nordic Squad. Let's hear it for the Nordic Squad taking home some Ace Hardware gift cards. Now, where did you guys travel from? Miami, from Miami. Yeah, below sea level. That truly a Nordic, uh, a Nordic destination. So, congratulations. I'm not sure that's 4,222 miles, but it might be some snowboarder math. It was an average of. Oh, an average of. Okay. The closest and furthest team member. The closest and the furthest team member. I'm now understanding. How about the furthest traveling individual? Miles traveled, 2252 miles. Let's hear it for Allie King, taking home some Maui Gym sunglasses. So, nice work, Allie, 2,252 miles, I love it. All right, let's move on to our top solo fundraisers. We'll wait uh, till Jesse delivers a, 
certificate there for her Maui Gym sunglasses. Our third place solo fundraiser, come on up here and join me in a second. Amount raised $4,225 for Oregon Donation Awareness. She was just up here a second ago. Miley Spung, come on back up here. Katula Spikes, a set of Gators, custom Summit for Life mug from our friend Michael Vaughn. Miley, where are you? Did you have to go uh, relieve the babysitter? All right, we need some. Oh, there she is. Come on up, Miley. She raised $4,225 with, with Team Robbie. Thank you, Miley. Our second place solo fundraiser raising $4,700. Let's hear it for Laura Hoffmans. She's taking home an Overmeyer jacket, 0.6 base layer set, custom Summit for Life mug from Michael Bonds. She's making her way to the front. Thank you, Laura. Nice job, congrats. Thank you. We got here two minutes ago. Oh, perfect, good timing. And our top solo fundraiser, hold on, let me change pages here. Am I getting this right? Raising a total of $5,430. Let's hear it for Denise Zubron. <laughs> Taking home a pizza oven from Ace Hardware. Order box base layer set. And a Michael Bond Summit for Life 2022 mug. Yeah, Denise. Nice work, Team Zubrod. How was the hike? We just got here. <laughs> easy. Yeah, easy. You were, you were enjoying it, getting your money. Yeah, we are eight minutes faster this year. Congratulations. Yeah. Denise, you got to pick up your swag over here. You get a pizza oven. Yeah, good thing someone in your family knows how to cook. Just what Matt wants to do. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. Thanks to our top three fundraisers. Miley, Laura, and Denise. Nice job, ladies. Thank you very much. We have our top kid fundraiser. Where's Miss Annabelle Case? Come up here, Annabelle. Taking home the Broncos signed photo and a Sunday's gift card. All right, we'll make sure Annabelle gets that. Or the Sunday's gift card. Does that go to the announcer if they're not in uh, here in person? Our second place kid fundraiser, Cora Chimaracas. Are you here? A couple of Glenwood Caverns day passes and a Sunday gift card. Yeah, Cora, nice job. I like the Santa hat. You don't like ice cream, though, do you? You don't like ice cream, right? Oh, you do. Okay. Congratulations. Nine and finish the race. Good job, Cora. And Cora and her dad and uh, Missy and Rivy and I hiked it last year. Did, did she beat you, Dad? <laughs> it's just a matter of time before we can't keep up. And our top kid fundraiser, let's hear it for Jake Rugerberg. <laughs> Taking the Duder backpack and also ice cream at Sundays. Yeah, Jake. Is Jake here? All right, we'll take your uh, Sunday gift card. Okay. All right, we got a couple more awards here. Our first to 500 in fundraising. Tracy Talander, is that right? All right, Tracy, you get two Iron Mountain Hot Springs passes. Jesse will have it right over here for you. Our first to 750 was Steve Wilkinson. Where's Steve? Steve and Karen drove over from... Breckenridge, Steve has done every one of our uh, Summit for Lives. His son Morgan had a kidney transplant. He and Karen drove over, skied Aspen Mountain all day, and are up here. Congrats, Steve. Always a pleasure. Always, always. All right, we got one more uh, fundraising award here. Our first to 1,000. How about Brittany Street? Come on up. Two VIP tickets to Thursday night at Five Point Film Fest. And our final fundraising award, our top fundraising team raised $15,010.
Love the name, Team DFL, come on up. 10 Mountain Division Hug Trip and a 12 pack Jen's Cafe Bars. You may need them to get there. Let's hear it for Team DFL, raising $15,010. And you didn't finish DFL, congratulations. Let's hear it for Team DFL. All right, you ready to find out who our fastest finishes are tonight? Our top three men in third place, everyone's taking home sunglasses from Ute Mountaineer and the custom Michael, ba Michael Bond Summit for Life mug and two Sunday gift cards for our fastest youth racers. Your fastest Male racer of the night, third place for the time of 54-10. Mike Shea, come on up! Yeah, Shea, nice work. Bronze is best. Hang out here for a second, Mike. Your second place male finisher for the time of 47-42, Andrew Reed. And your 2022 Men's Summit for Life champion by the time of 40-53, your Summit for Life record holder, your Aspen Mountain America's Uphill record holder. Come on up, John Gaston. He had to go home. What is he, a dad of a couple of young kids? Let's hear it for John Gaston, Andrew Reed, and Mike Shea. Your 2022 Summit for Life podium. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Maybe. All right, let's bring up our fastest women in Aspen. Your third place finisher with a time of 106.54. She's a regular to the Summit for Life podium. Jennifer Mendez, come on up. I followed Jennifer one time for a very short distance and her feet were moving so fast, I got exhausted just trying to keep up. Not for long. Congratulations, Jennifer. Our second place female finisher, silver medalist with a time of 105.17, Megan Newcomer. And your 2022 Summit for Life Women's champion with a time of 53-42, Kristen Lane. I think that's a repeat, isn't it? Nice job, Kristen, congratulations. Jennifer Mendez, Megan Newcomer, and Kristen Lane, your 2022 Women's Summit for Life podium. Our fastest team with a combined time of 20, 20, 10, two hours, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds, Team Lucille. Woo! Our fastest youth racer with a time of 1.30.27, Justin Mavrova, come on up! I knew he was fast. We've got some virtual awards where we're gonna present those online because I wanna hear Midnight Lightning a little bit more. Let's bring them back up here in a second. I just wanna finish by saying thank you to all of you for being here. Thanks for believing in this mission, for believing in this foundation, for putting up with me on the mic and uh, bugging all of you to come up here tonight. I really appreciate it. I promise you our volunteer board uh, myself, all of us that volunteer for this, will be good stewards of every dollar raised. We'll get the most bang for every buck to continue this mission until we eliminate the weight together. That's the mission. I want to, uh, I want to just bring up two ladies here to finish this because I'm the talking head up here with the mic in my hand, but 
Jesse, Rochelle, and Anna Morgan Pilardi are really the, the ones that do all the hard work behind this foundation. So please give our programming director, our executive director, a big round of applause. Morgan, where are, where's uh, Anna? She's probably still out there cheering on our, uh, our final finishers and uh, helping clean up, but they do an awesome job. Our CKF mantra is live life, give life. So please take that with you uh, this winter. I wish you all an awesome winter and uh, a great holiday ahead. Thank you so much for being here. Midnight Lightning. One last announcement. If you did borrow the Catula Spikes, Danny, Mary, Austin, thank you for driving here and being a part of this. Please return the, the borrowed Catula Spikes on the way out before you head down the gondola. There's more chili, more beer, more Paradise Bakery cookies. Enjoy it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys.